Hi guys, this is SDJR Snap88 speaking with another Signal sponsored review featuring the all new modified hall from Batman. Now, this model was originally met with a lot of controversy uh, about a year ago when the first batch was released and has since uh, been sort of scrutinised uh, due to a number of errors. Now, uh, back in 2011, 2012, the model was announced and in 2013, the first batch arrived. Now, the first batch uh, had a fair few errors. This included the running plates, steam pipes, uh, some of the railings and also the superheater. Now, Batman have um, you know, very kindly, and hats off to them, recalled uh, the models that had been released uh, to people who wanted um, them returned and have since made many modifications. But sadly, a few of the errors remain, and um, as will be seen in this review. Now, this is, of course, from Signal's models, you know, being a Signal sponsored review. As you can see, their price is £120, which is very reasonable for the class. If we come on to the end, we have the product code, which is 31 783, modified hall class 7904, BR line black, early emblem, fountains hall, weathered. Now, also, we have um, the 8 pin DCC socket, which is fitted to all of the um, modified hall class which Batman are releasing. Now, there are four variants to be released. Uh, this uh, uh, Fountain Hall, this one here, is one of them. We also have uh, Swiftland Hall, which is being released in pristine BR early green, no, sorry, late green, with Hawksworth style tender. Then we also have Formark Hall, uh, which is the same livery as uh, Fountain Hall here, but not weathered. So that is BR early lined uh, black. And then we have the fourth variant, which is uh, Frilston Hall. Now, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Now, as mentioned, there are a number of errors with the modified Hall class, but Frilston Hall, as uh, spotted by Elaine in Signals Models, has uh, a separate sort of fault of its own, and a very sort of interesting, a sort of funny one that I, I, I personally feel. Basically, uh, Frilston Hall, if I've pronounced that correctly, has an E at the end of it. And in the magazines, in the Batman catalogue, and even on the box, it does have an E at the end of the spelling. But if you look at the nameplate on the side of the model, it is missing the E, which you know, is quite, you know, I thought was quite funny. Now, Elaine, as soon as she spotted this, got in contact with Batman and expected Batman to say that, you know, she's not the first one to have spotted this. But surprisingly, she is the first one to actually have spotted it, and even Batman were quite surprised. So I'm not sure what Batman are going to do. I'm sure they, you know, they may even, you know, they'll try to probably figure out a way to sort this out. But uh, hats off to Elaine as well for spotting the arrow, and uh, Batman seemed to praise her for that as well. I thought that was quite a bit of a laugh, really. But a word of warning uh, to those of you who have Frilston Hall on order um, that it is missing the E, and it's wrongly spelt on the logo itself. Anyway. Back to the model in question here, Fountain Hall. If I turn the model over, we have the usual um, brief history about the class on the back. Now, the top paragraph here is really about the original design uh, of uh, Hall from Charles Collett. But the, so we really need to focus on the paragraph below. But basically, the uh, a number of uh, modified halls were built uh, from 1941 by. Um, F. W. Hawksworth, who modified the hall design. Now, the hall design, uh, basically, a number of modifications were made to create the modified hall, including uh, you know, features like the superheater, you know, the angle of the steam pipes on the side of the smoke box, but also to the running plate itself. Now, the running plate on a normal hall is a beautiful curved shape and is seen on the modified hall as well. But uh, Modified Hall's main feature is they feature this sort of rectangular sort of frame, inner frame, which comes out from underneath the smoke box and gives it its iconic feature, um, which basically sort of strengthens the running plate in itself as it was sort of considered the beautiful curved design of the Great Western uh, running plate was sort of weak. So um, Hawksworth sort of designed that sort of feature to improve the strength, overall strength of the running plate. Anyway, if I turn the model back around, and um, without further ado, we will get her out of the outer packaging and have a closer look at the model itself. So, uh, be right back in a moment. Right, uh, here she is out of the outer packaging. As we can see, we have the instructions, warranty, and other paperwork that is included with you know, practically every Batman model there. Also, the um, Collector's Club sort of form as well. I'll pop that back in the tray. Then we got the model itself 
encased in its, uh, you know, the usual standard ice cube packaging, which I absolutely adore. Uh, really is easy to get the model in and out of. Um, so I do love this form of packaging. As we can see, the Loco is separate from the Tender, as I'll mention later on in the review, unlike some uh, recent additions um, to the Batman range, and in fact the Hornby range as well, where the Loco is permanently connected to the, um, to the Tender. So it is quite an interesting feature to see. But as we can see, there is, um, you know, Sorry about the reflection there. Uh, it really does look a lovely model indeed. One thing that is quite surprising is the model doesn't include, as we can see on top, any separate fitted, uh, separately fitted details like brake rigging and stuff. But um, as we'll see later on in the review, um, many a sort of little separate, what we, what I would consider a separately fitted uh, details have been pre-fitted to the model. So um, there's no sort of loss there. So anyway, I guess that's all that's to do now is to put it on the track and have a closer look. So uh, again, I'll be right back in a moment. Right, uh, here she is on the track. And um, first impressions, she is a very lovely model indeed. Now, as mentioned, there are a few errors um, regarding comparing this model to the real uh, class, the real modified hall, of course. Uh, which I will go into detail uh, as we look around the model. So as always, we'll start off at the front, and as you can see, you've got the lovely uh, copper top uh, chimney there. Really does look very smart on there. I believe that is turned metal and is separate to the plastic moulding, so it's fitted over the top there. Coming down to the smoke box, we have a nice lot of rivet detail around the outside there. We've also got the smoke box door itself. Uh, I don't believe it opens. Uh, I don't really want to check. I'm not very good with the uh, opening of the uh, smoke box doors, but I don't believe it is on this model. Separately fitted smoke box dart, along with the uh, uh, protruding uh, shed plate code, which I believe, if the camera does focus, it is going to go out of focus as it always does. Um, that is 81A, I believe. There we go, 81A. We've also got the running number, 7904. Then this is where the model uh, starts to uh, become what the well one of the errors of this uh, well of the production. Now, as we come onto the running plate, in between we have these uh, two supports here. Now this is what well, what I find the most iconic part, uh, the easiest way to tell a modified hull from uh, an original sort of styled hull is these uh, two like uh, metal plates that come out and extend the sort of uh, along the running plate. These were uh, sort of added uh, in belief that they strengthen the sort of curved running plate of the hull. Now in between those two metal plates uh, should it should actually be at a right angle. There shouldn't be that raised uh, curved area. It should actually be a right angle right uh, from the back of sort of uh, where the uh, right there where the uh, sort of the cylinder chest is there it should be at a right angle now um, this is purely because Batman have recycled the old uh, hull chassis from the original uh, hull now this is obviously done for a cost saving measure but it really does let down the overall look of the model as you know as I mentioned it is one of the iconic uh, features of the modified hull and you know to change this uh, to design a whole new metal running plate I can understand would cost a lot more, and it would have cost them uh, would have raised the cost of the overall model by quite a substantial amount. But to make the model accurate, it really is needed. Now, Batman can be praised for a number of modifications they did make to the other previous model, which was released in 2013, which had loads and loads of errors. But really, this error here is sort of um, really does let down the overall look of the model, as well as the um, that sort of uh, shaping error, that right angle, that well, that right angle that should be there. There, uh, the rivets around the running plate on the front there also uh, shouldn't be there. They should be at different locations. Now, I'm not a rivet counter. But uh, when uh, I did read um, a, a magazine's review on this, and once you compare it to a real picture, which is next to the image, it really is very noticeable, which it is a shame, and it really does let down an otherwise brilliant looking model. Now, we come down onto the bogey, and this is where there is another uh, error. Uh, now, on the front of the bogey there, there should be a plate which goes all the way across where the, uh, the NEM coupling is. Now. I don't personally. Uh, I personally don't mind that that's not there because, well, you've got to get the NEM coupling there. But to people that don't use NEM couplers, it really is you know 
uh, understandable why they, they might uh, find it a bit annoying that that plate is not there. As again, it's another iconic feature of the modified hull. But uh, then again, it could easily be modified if you're not uh, putting the NEM coupling on there. And it is understandable why Batman didn't include it. Because once it's going around, you will not see that. Now, coming onto the side, we have the cylinders. And this is where Batman can really be praised. The uh, 2013... Um, sort of first release of this uh, of the modified of, of the retooled modified hull had an error with the cylinders where the cylinders were precisely the same as on the original hull which is basically where the cylinders do not go up and meet the frames as we can see batman have really uh, enhanced the model here and managed to correct this error by increasing the length of the cylinders if i just put my finger in there right up so they're now touching the uh, running plate which is correct to as on the modified hull which is a really nice feature now we also have the drain uh, drainage cocket, uh, cocks on the bottom of the uh, cylinders and they are come pre-fitted and uh, yeah it really does uh, look very nice on there. As we come along the side we have the beautiful driving wheels. Again now as you can see the weathering uh, as this is the weathered model really does look very nice. It's very nicely applied to overall to the model and uh, it really has utilised, this whole underside of the loco is really uh, utilising the old uh, original hull design uh, and is very very good I must admit. Now we come up onto the cab, as you can see there's plenty of rivet detail there. Now in front of that cab window, I'm not sure if you can see it, if I zoom in there, there is a, a railing, as you can see it's an L shaped railing. Now this is another feature that Batman modified uh, from the uh, the one that was released in 2013, which was wrong. Uh, it had a straight, uh, basically a straight railing. This has obviously been uh, now replaced with the correct L-shaped one, which goes around the window, which is nice to see Batman have managed to do that. We come onto the firebox. We have the wash plugs, which are uh, nicely molded. We also have the separately fitted uh, handrail and also uh, a bit of pipe work there as well. And the reverser is separately fitted, which brings us on nicely to the name, of course, the nameplate which is very well applied indeed. As you can see, Fountain's Hall. You can see there's a nice little dusting of weathering on there. There's quite a bit of dusting, well, quite a nice dusting of weathering around the wheels and the underframe sort of thing, and it slowly thins as it comes towards the top of the boiler, sort of giving the effect of the oily rags uh, being used to clean the paintwork. Now, we come onto the uh, smoke box again. Now, one thing I've got to mention first time round was the steam pipes. Now, the steam pipes on the 2013 version were um, again another uh, issue and uh, basically they weren't the correct sort of angle or shape to as on the modified hull but Batman have since corrected this and it really does enhance the overall look really a well done to Batman they should be praised for all the modifications all the criticism they all the criticisms they took with the first um, first batch which they have since corrected then we come back up onto the top of the model now and we move slowly back along we have the iconic um, Great Western uh, safety valve there, which is part of the moulding and is painted in a metallic sort of uh, brass sort of paint. Uh, very nice indeed. There is a very, very, very fine mould line along the top of the boiler, though it is very, very hard to see, which is um, which is great to see, really. Um, you know, as a, on some models, uh, the mould line tends to be very, very sort of. Um, you, you see it very clearly and it sort of does uh, take away from the look of the overall finish of the model but on the modified hull it is very you know, very very fine and you can hardly see it indeed then we come on to the front of the cab and we have the whistles there now the whistles are molded and they are plastic uh, which you know is understandable it is one of the cost saving measures but if you wanted to improve those I'm sure a bit of uh, brass paint or copper paint wouldn't, wouldn't do any harm at all and uh, you know, would brighten them up a bit but um, again when the model's going around it is one of those features that is hard to see. We come back onto the side of the cab again with all that lovely riv rivet detail and the well applied text and uh, you know, icons there and again the running number 7904. Now we come on to the cab itself, the interior of the cab. Now luckily the modified hull uh, unlike some of the recent tender uh, engines uh, isn't permanently connected to the tender so th uh, the tender can simply just be pulled away there as you can see we've got the the hook there which connects the uh, tender to the um, loco itself now it's the same design as on the previous uh, non-modified hull which uh, you know is quite a you know nice little feature really I sort of do like the engines which you can uncouple uh, from the tender 
Uh, but uh, it does mean the tender doesn't have any tender pickups. So it's all the pickups are on the loco. But in doing this and separating the tender from the loco there, we can see there is plenty of cab detail in there. Really, really nice amount and very well picked out indeed. We've got the regulator and we've got all the little, um, you know, little gauges and all that as well. So it's very nice indeed and you can see the glazing in there as well. So this brings us on to the tender. Now the tender is not much different to as on the uh, original styled halls. Uh, it's a pretty a standard sort of Great Western uh, tender uh, as used on a number of Batman models. But there is a, a nice, quite a, a bit of detail on here. Uh, we can see we've got the nice um, sort of, uh, you know, the handles there, all very well applied. The coal load is moulded, but I'm sure you can modify that uh, to a real coal load very easily. Um, you've got nicely picked out little latches and all that there on the little toolboxes and the little chute for the coal. And the, there, e there even is a bit of moulded coal, which sort of gives the effect of the coal sort of cascading out of the tender itself. They've got the little slot there, which is where the hook from the loco goes into, which uh, then there's a little sort of a uh, little uh, sprue in there, if you could call it like that, little spike, uh, which you then uh, sort of slot um, the hole on the hook um, into, really. You either connect it quite closely coupled or slightly further apart for tighter radiuses. You've got nice little metal buffers there as well, um, which is, of course, on the tender to stop the tender from sort of uh, riding into the loco. If we come on down to the underside of the tender, we've got the nicely applied weathering again, very heavy around the bottom and it slightly thins out as you can see as it works its way up the body. Now as well on the um, on the tender here, we've got the brake rigging. Now the brake, uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the Loco is the brake, rig brake rigging is pre-fitted uh, on the tender and on the Loco itself. So it is really nice of Batman to do that. Uh, we've got the beautiful British Railways early emblem, which is very well applied indeed, very easily uh, legible, and very, so I do love it, it's very crisp. Along with the uh, lining, uh, the the grey, black and red, um, red or orange lining around the outside of the uh, sort of tender there. Plenty of rivet detail as well. If we come on to the back, we have the um, little uh, plate there as well. Sorry, not the camera there, uh, which again is very legible. Sadly, the camera is not picking it up, but I believe it says Great Western. Um, I'm trying to read it off the screen because I can't really see it from the angle. Um, but it has the uh, you know the the gallon, um, how many gallons the tender is on there. We've also got the moulded steps which go up onto the top of the tender where the uh, water filler cap is. And on the buffers there, I believe they are sprung buffers. I'm not sure. I will uh, check uh, in a moment and I will clarify that back in a second. Uh, and then we also have the NEM couplings there. Uh, and we have the uh, vacuum pipe, which is separately fitted. Now, guess what? Uh, the next thing to do, I guess, is to couple it back up to the locomotive itself and uh, do a bit of a test run with it. So be right back in a moment. Right, uh, before we get started on how she performs, uh, I can confirm that both the buffers on the loco and the tender are sprung, which is a very you know, interesting feature to see, as many of the uh, Batman uh, previous uh, recent releases from Batman, like the E4 or 64XX, do not have this feature. But it is nice to see sprung buffers are back. Personally, I don't care much for sprung buffers. I think they're sort of a, they do add to the overall cost of the model. Uh, you don't really use them um, when they're on uh, you know, on the track, of course, um, unless you have an accident with the model, which um, you know is best not to, of course. But anyway, um, they are there, and so for those of you who do like sprung buffers, uh, I can safely say that this model does have them. So here she is, all set up. She's now uh, reunited with the tender. Again, this is on the HM2000. So if I slowly turn the power on. There we go. Now, she has not been run in. But that is a very nice crawl indeed. It's a bit of a wind there and a tiny bit of a... Oh, she's sticking a tiny bit. But this is understandable. She has not been run in yet. I'll give her a bit more juice. Oh, there we go. Yeah, she is sticking a tiny bit. But like I said, after... A, a good recommended run-in of about uh, 30 minutes in each direction. I'm sure she would, um, she'll loosen up a bit. But still, you can see there is um, there is potential for very smooth running there. Get around the corner a bit. There, I see she's 
starting to get into a stride there. Slower down. Flip her into reverse. Again, she has no problem pulling away. It just seems to stick a bit where the uh, rods get down a, a bit low, lower on the wheels. Now, I believe this is the same uh, running chassis motor pickups as on the original haul. Now, the original uh, haul from Batman has been mentioned that they're not the best of performers, and um, you know I'm not sure. Maybe this might be why. I honestly do not know. But like I said, this model hasn't been ran in properly. Uh, or hasn't been ran in at all. This is straight from the box, so I could sort of understand this. But um, yeah, you know, there has been uh, you know in the past people have said about Batman halls not being uh, as smooth as some of their other locos. But um, nevertheless, she is uh, she does seem to be performing quite well. You're know, pulling away quite slowly, so I'll just bring her back a bit. But yeah, she there is definitely a very noticeable stick when the rods get down to the lower proportion of the wheel there. Slow her down again and stop her there. Right, now there you have it. I guess that's all to um, do now is to do the overall ratings of the model. So I'll be right back in a second. So how do I rate the Batman Modified Hall? Well, I think Batman really have improved from the first variant. Uh, back in 2013 there were a lot of errors on that model and which have been uh, rectified on this uh, current version. Sadly that um, you know curve in the running plate underneath the smoke box really really is a sort of a, a, a disappointing feature and really does let down otherwise what is a brilliant model. But like I said don't let that uh, knock it. It really is quite a nice model indeed. Um, very well well built lovely livery application, uh, lovely detail, and I'm sure the performance is there with a good run-in. But um, yeah, it is, it is a bit, it is hard to sort of uh, you know, swayed from the fact that that is a bit of a sort of a letdown for the overall look, and it is one of the iconic features of the modified hall. But then again, still a, a lovely model. Anyway, ratings. So, um, packaging. Uh, it has to be a 9.5 out of 10, standard Batman packaging, very easy to get in and out of. Uh, it's the ice cube, of course, um, so that's 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the model itself, detail. Now, I'm going to do two um, sort of things for detail. The one, the actual detail of the model, and two, uh, detail as in accuracy. So, uh, detail of the model as in you know, what's physically there. Um, I will give it an 8 out of 10. It is not to as high a standard as some of the latest uh, releases from Batman, i.e. the E4 or the 64XX, but it's still got plenty of uh, features, including the separately fitted handrails, um, you know, the drain um, cocks, the um, brake rigging, and of course sprung buffers, which is sort of a bonus really. Um, then we come on to accuracy detail, as in uh, comparing the model to the real locomotive. Now, there are still, um, as mentioned, with the, the running plate, um, you know, a fair few things that are still not correct and which really do let the model down in accuracy. Now, um, for that, I will give the model a 7.5 out of 10, which, you know, it really is a shame. It sort of does, um, you know, break my heart a bit to really give it sort of a, such of a low rating. But, you know, that running plate really is sort of um, a bit of a, you know, bit of a, a mess, mess up really. Um, but I can see why Batman done it for cost saving measures, but I think it might have been one of those cost saving measures a bit too much. Uh, livery application. Livery application, as always, up to Batman's high standards, 10 out of 10, really nicely finished. The weathering is very nicely done, even though it's like a sort of light sort of rail, you know, like sort of a rail dirt uh, brushing on the bottom, bit of an aeros you know, aerosol sort of thing. It really is, you know, nicely applied and all the text um, and uh, emblems and um, it really is well, well done. So, uh, oh, and performance, I forgot, almost forgot performance there. Performance, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 there. Um, admittedly, it is not uh, as smooth from the box, but then again, it hasn't been ran in. I'm sure it will improve, but um, I have had models that do have a, a bit of a sort of stick like that as well. And, you know, no matter how much I run them in, sometimes the stick does stay. So um, I'm just going to sort of, you know, bite the bullet here and give it an 8 out of 10 for performance there. 
But um, anyway, overall for the model, I reckon it's safe to say to give the model an 8.5 out of 10. Um, you know, it really is a nice model. Don't let the uh, few sort of errors put you off. Um, it's you know still overall model. If if you are after a, a more accurate uh, haul, of course, uh, modified haul, do go for the uh, older version of the the Batman model. Now, of course, uh, all credit to Signals. Signals do have these in stock uh, for the great price of £120. Uh, of course, they have Fountain Hall here, uh, and I believe they are getting the um, pristine version, both the pristine versions in, whether or not they have arrived yet. I know that the uh, pristine early black one is still yet to arrive. The green one is on the way, I believe, and I think they also have a, a, a weathered uh, green one as well. But they're all £120, um, really good price. Do check out their website, link in the description below. And uh, big thanks to them. So anyway, uh, this has been SDJR, Senf88 speaking, and uh, thanks for watching.